Okay, let's see if we can press this loose pigment kaleidoscope into a pan. All right, so I've got some important tools here. I've got my Nespresso tamper, I've got my depotting tool, and I've got my other one from Hobby Lobby as well. And then also, if you happen to pick up the June bundle or you got this in a mystery bag, don't throw away the box. We'll use this as our label for the bottom of the pan. Hi, I'm Kendra Morgan Official, and I like to put out content around single eyeshadows, makeup brushes, and sunscreen. So if you like that kind of content, be sure to subscribe. And I'm just now taking off this here. See, there's a label underneath the shadow and then there's also a label right here i'm going to do this in natural light because this is a really awesome duochrome it's kind of like a topper and i want to show it in natural lighting kind of with um, uneven lighting so that you can see the awesome shift um let me just work at this for just a minute okay i've got the i want to say edge but this little part of the sticker up and i'm just going to gently keep pulling it up so that it comes off hopefully with the sticky part intact and it looks like we've gotten a fiber tear so just got to be real careful awesome okay I might go ahead and spray this first with some alcohol just to make sure I get any oils off and that way when I stick this sticker on hopefully it has the best chance of staying on awesome okay so I put some alcohol on there and then wiped it off with some cotton um, in the form of my t-shirt and now let's go ahead and put this sticker on yeah we'll just leave it like that that'll work okay perfect now it's labeled with the Sydney Grace logo and the name and also the batch code that's pretty cool Ooh. And then again, just placing a little dab of some alcohol. Let that dry, and once it's all evaporated, we'll go ahead and start loading up some of our pigment. I'm not going to um, take this off just because, why? I mean, I got full access here, and this will work just fine. Look at that. Look at that awesomeness. Now, the pigment itself, let me go ahead and swatch it for you while this is drying, you know, just kind of finishing up drying. The pigment itself just kind of, it seems a little bit um, patchy and whatnot, but let me show you. I don't know if you can see that or not but it's almost got a multi-chrome effect on the eyelid. So that's pretty neat. It is like, if you look on it straight on, it looks like it's patchy, but it's kind of a, a shadow topper. It reminds me of one of the shades in the Pat McGrath palette. Um, you know, one of her pinks. <laughs> like, like she doesn't already have a bunch of them. Okay, so now we're ready. This is dried up. We're ready to I guess mix this. This is kind of a nice pigment. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me not get ahead of myself. Really quickly, I want to just show you that the ingredient list does contain, go ahead and, uh, you know, stop it right here, but go ahead and make sure that your pressed, your loose pigment contains a binder of some sort. And the binder that is found in this one is Magnesium Mysterate. So that is your binding agent. It's in there, so we can just press this. We can use force, and we should be able to obtain a pressed shadow. If it doesn't have one, you'll have to add that binder in. And um, I don't, what's this? What is this? Oh, that's just a little. Okay. Now it's where I get worried. Should I change the camera angle, or should I keep it the same? Well, we'll move it as we need it. But okay, let's go ahead and fill up. And I do have a piece of paper underneath my little work area here because I imagine this will probably stain pretty good. So, uh, good manufacturing practice. Okay, let's fill up this pan over 
the loose shadow. So we don't have to be quite as careful. You know, we're losing the loose pigment to the actual stock solution, if, if you want to call it that. All right, next place. I'm using a piece of tissue paper, so I have seen people in the past place paper towels. I don't recommend paper towels just because they have little tiny fibers and I feel like they might get into your shadow when you press it really hard. So I like to use a uh, tissue paper to try and minimize that as much as possible. Let's go ahead and get a press on this. All right, so I'm gonna press down super hard and then you're gonna see I'm gonna tack in those edges, just kind of tuck them in. See how I'm just kind of folding it around just because this top part right here, this is only 24 millimeters and your pan is 26 if you're using a standard. All the depotting and pressing tools will be linked in the description box down below. So if you're interested in picking up some of those, you can do that. All right, here's our first go at it. Oh, it looks pretty flaky. Looks exceptionally flaky. All right, let me give it another good press. Give it the old Hebo. There we go. It's not a real true press until you get a little grunt in there. I'm giving it all I've got. Oh, now you can see that shift. And let's see what we've got here. So it looks pretty good. I mean, it's going to be, it's, it's not going to be the most optimal. They probably left this in a loose form for this reason. But, you know, I want to press I want a pressed form of kaleidoscope. So let's go ahead and do the next one. Let me get out of the camera's view so you can see me loading it. Okay, layer number two. And this is approximately seven grams. Only two, two and a half grams will probably fit. So again, adding the shadow. And then cookie cutter, what is this called when you, they have a form, they have a name for it in baking, I don't know what it's called, but anyways, let's move this stock solution aside so I don't dump it, and let's give it a go. Again, place your stuff over the top, ooh, 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 get a good angle here, and give it a press. Okay, there she be. Uh, we came up outside the lip just a little bit. I'm gonna press it. You can't see that, but I pressed it in there quite nicely. Adding a third layer here to the pan. Overfilling it just a little bit. Let's do one more. And I feel like you could make one for yourself and one for all your friends. Move this aside so I don't dump it. Otherwise there won't be any left for my friends. <laughs> then grab my Nespresso tamper or whatever you've got and give it a go. Oh yeah, that's a good press. I felt that one in my bones. Um, doesn't look so good right here, but that's okay. We will keep it going. And the secret is to try and as evenly as possible press down. Okay. You'll see there's some coming up over the edges. Don't worry about that. You've got plenty of the product. You weren't going to use it all anyway, Kendra. All right. Then I'm sliding this around and kind of pushing that in. And then I'm going to do one big press. I'm going to come out of it. I'm going to off some of this excess. Okay, we've got fallout. That's what I was afraid of. I don't know if this is gonna press all that great. I feel like the particle size on this shadow is relatively large, so you're probably not gonna get 
a very good press. Not without a machine. But you know, you can always you can always hope. I mean there's a reason why Cindy Grace didn't put this in a pan. I have to think that they're a little smarter than I am. Okay. That's about as good as I can get. This is just gonna be a soft pan, but anyways, there you go. So taking it from this to this. Okay, there you have it.